Go so ahead. there was this article that went kind of, I don't know, viral. There was videos associated with it. Uh, came out from the New York Times recently called Fighting for Anthony, the struggle to save Portland, Oregon. And sort of the, the tagline is, or the, the header is, the city has long grappled with street homelessness and a shortage of housing. Now fentanyl has turned a perennial problem into a deadly crisis and a challenge to the city's progressive identity. Oh, I saw this headline and I was like, I need to come back and hate read this later. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, what, the most annoying part about the article isn't obvious. Well, we'll get into what it's annoying, but, but the, the title of like, uh, you know, like struggling for Anth or fighting for Anthony. Now, Anthony Saldana is this person who they they highlight who was convinced to move to or uh, Portland from uh, by his sister. He goes there, he moves. He never quite finds his footing, even though he has a job at office at Home Depot. He's not able to keep his apartment. And I'm like, hang on, right there. So when you move past the whole part that the guy had an actual job and wasn't able to afford rent, that's that's like, oops, and now we're going in the different direction. Instead, the article basically um, targets the measure, measure 110, which was uh, a measure that decriminalized in some aspects opioids. So you get like a hundred dollar fine if you have a small amount of meth or fentanyl on you. Uh, and you get like a pamphlet about addi addiction treatment. And then there was supposed to be a lot of money dedicated to those addiction treatment services rolling out in the city. It's only been in effect for like an, uh, a year and a half. But then the article is basically like, even though it was slow to roll out, residents have seen that like, you know, uh, overdoses are increasing and people tent cities are growing and has this whole thing failed and has, you know, and so, and in fact, lo and behold, this summer in June, uh, city council in Portland just criminalized camping, uh, from apparently during the day you can camp at night, but not during the day. So like this article is so infuriating. It has, there's no assessment of like, Hey, what about actually legalizing and and treating people with drugs? What about actually cracking down by regulating things like fentanyl? If you and this is the thing is like, so the whole art the, hard, the whole article is just about this one guy, and he did pass away. He died. Um, it is very sad, but it serves nothing but a again neoliberal pro police agenda that it all that these articles constantly do when they give an attempt at decriminalization, what, a year and a half, slow rollout by their own admission, no taking no aim at the housing market, taking no aim at anyone else, at the at drug policies federally. And then it's like, well, I guess we need to criminalize camping again because that's the solution. Or I guess we need to lock up the fentanyl users because that's the solution. I don't we've understand this. We've, we've, we've tried nothing uh, and we're all out of ideas. Yeah, we're all out of ideas, so lock them all up because then we don't have to see it. And then we don't have to see the uh, the overdosing. So I guess what's the most frustrating, we we had talked about this before on a previous episode of The Habituation Room um, with Paige, please remind me of her name, uh, but, you know, about the fentanyl crisis and how it's a fucking killer. It's a It's a murderer that has been created in part thanks to the DEA cracking down on uh, like opio over the counter opioids or not over the counter, but like prescription opioids um, like Oxycontin and cracking down on doctors who are over prescribing it, which is great and holding Sacklers accountable minimally. That's great. But people are still addicted. So they're going to go to street drugs. And so they're going to fentanyl. So what the fuck are we doing about fentanyl that isn't like, oh, yeah, build a massive wall on the border? Because guess what? The shit is being cut horribly in the United States. It's not being cut in Mexico. The fentanyl's being shipped into this country through Mexico, which by the way, Nato, did you know that when you are in labor, there is only one drug that they offer you to get through labor? And that's fucking fentanyl. Hospitals give out fentanyl on the reg for a drug that they're like, we've never seen anything. You see it all the time. Of course you know what fentanyl is. If fentanyl, just like it is in hospitals when you give it to pregnant women and people who are in labor, if it were regulated, if we knew what the dosage dosages were, do you think we would see the kind of overdosing that we're seeing in the streets of Portland? No. So, anyway. I mean, 
the, the it's interesting because the I mean the conversation about you know the 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 like post Black Lives Matter backlash we're in the middle of it mm -hmm. uh, in full force um, you know and and in San Francisco also like there's a big push around like let's arrest drug users now not just drug dealers um, and you know this idea about compulsory treatment and so. Um, you know, you will recall we've had on on the Bituation Room, uh, San Francisco reporter Joe Eskenazi of Mission Local. Yeah. And and uh, last week, Mission Local did a great article. SF says drug users turn down services, but what's on offer? And they actually dug into like what are the services that are provided? Mm -hmm. And it turns out, like most addicts, like being addicted to fentanyl is no one's plan A. Like, right. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so a whole series of other shit has gone wrong if like when that's you know when that's what they're doing like if they end up there and most people who are addicted would rather not be addicted and would rather have access to some kind of services and the services that we offer aren't even close to meeting the need like uh like in in san francisco like we have data about how many people are currently accessing services for drug treatment mm -hmm. And it's all, all all the available services are full. What mm -hmm. we the data we don't have is how many people would accept drug treatment if it was offered to them. Like, we just know that there's you know so this huge number of people like and so then there's also this conflation of addiction and tent encampments. Yes. And like there's some amount of overlap obviously between homelessness, addiction, and mental illness, but it's not all the same thing. And no. by the way, like if you're homeless it's much easier to get addicted because like what the fuck else is going on? Yes. And, and it sucks. Yes. And um, <laughs> I'm not doing a service to uh, our, our former guests, but Maya Sla Slalovitz who came on and I'm butchering her name again. Maya was wonderful. Everyone should check that episode out. Um, but we've also spoken about how homelessness leads to addiction like that and homelessness leads to mental illness that like being unhoused like makes you feel crazy and makes you feel um like you're exposed to everything and to all kinds of harm and violence but the other thing about like you're talking about like treatment that's one thing the other thing and we're never going to get this in this country because when fucking biden has clean needles in some kind of, you know, harm reduction pack that was sent out because of the pandemic, the right goes crazy. And what does Biden do? They rescind it. They take it away. They, they get rid of the needles um, because they were saying they were crack pipes when they weren't. And you're just like, but what we actually need is harm reduction. We need to have, we, we should have like regulated doses of people who are addicted to opioids. Why? Because they won't die. That's why. If you want to save lives, if you care about the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, of overdoses, if that's what you really care about, if you care about the streets being clean and blah, 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 bullshit, that I can't help you with. That's some whatever. That's some NIMBY bullshit. If you care about people living, then you need to regulate and legalize drugs, including these, including opioids. Um. So anyway, yeah, there was more addiction when there was more uh, Oxycontin prescribed but were there more overdoses debatable i mean i think uh you know maya would say no mm. so anyway just it's it's just bullshit it's all just fear mongering again and it's very annoying that instead of going in the like why couldn't this person afford a, a, to stay indoors after working at home depot why couldn't he find his footing does it have anything to do with skyrocketing skyrocketing rents in portland unaffordability, lack of housing. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.